Hello and welcome to your next tutorial in CSS and today we're going to be discussing the float property. So what is the float property? Well what it does is it really helps uh, construct your website when it comes to positioning your elements and what it can do is either float an object on one side of your web page or the other side of that web page or within another float uh, and it can become really useful in again in positioning. So uh, I just want to show you this uh, I'll have an image of the smiley once again and for me it's been a while since I've used the smiley and some extraneous text there and a really long paragraph that just says this is a sample paragraph again and again just to fill up space so I'll refresh the browser and I think this is it yeah that's it so as you can see here I have my smiley here but the text starts down here at the next line what if I don't want it here to start here what if I want it to begin here and eventually wrap back down here uh, what we can do is float the image. So uh, let's give the image here an ID of uh, pick underscore one. Then our default CSS, let's modify the pick underscore one and float it to the left. So I'll click save and let's see what happens. And now all the text is over there, and I'm just a little shy. Let me add a little bit more there. So I should just add in a little bit more. Copy, paste, so, so you can see. Cause that's kind of important. There we go, and it continues from down there. So as you can see, now the text can actually start up there. And from this point, it's up to you in deciding on how you're going to modify the page. Like perhaps maybe you don't want there to be zero pixels between all these S's here and the picture itself. Maybe you want some margin. So let's add a margin. Uh, so for pick one, let's mess with margin only on the right side, shall we? Let's add five pixels. So I'll save, and let's see uh, a margin appear here. And there it is. Now we can see it's all. there's a nice space here. Uh, so from here, yeah, you can really mess around with what you want to do with positioning. So if we wanted to float the image to the right, if I click save, and then refresh, now it's on the right side, and as you can see, it still uh, will go down for you. Oh, whoops, I don't want to click that. And yeah, the text still does that, as I was suspecting. I don't know if I'm going to be able to solve this in the, this tutorial, if it'll be two tutorials from now that I'll have this solved for you, but oh, I have plans. Okay, so, well, is that all we wanted to do? Eh, probably not. So, what if we actually wanted to put this in one, in its own section on the web page and be able to move it wherever we'd like? What we can do is actually create a division tag around all of this. So I have the open division tag up there and the closing div tag down here. And I'll give this one an ID of section one. Then in the default CSS, let's modify section one, shall we? So let's first give it a background color. I'll give it a background color of gray. And let's give it a width of only 400 pixels. So let's see what we have so far. A width of 400 pixels, so there you go. And uh, a height of as long as it goes. What if you want to be able to control the height? Well, you know what? Before I do that, let me add in uh, padding this time. Because I don't want to add margin to the outside. I want to add padding on the inside this time. So first, let me add in some padding, please. And in case you're wondering, the only reason why there's... You might be thinking, well, isn't there padding right here? Well, that's actually because we added margin to the image. So you know what? Let me get rid of the margin here for the image. And if I do that, see, then it moved back over. So now if I go padding, let's go five pixels in all directions. So this should be padding on this side as well. There we go. Now there's padding on the top, this side. There's padding here on this side. So it's all nice. Now let's see about controlling the height of this. So if we go height, let's make it only 300 pixels. I'll click save. And now it's only 300 pixels, but all the text keeps going down. Now if you'd like to solve this, we can use the overflow property. So one is the hidden, and that will get rid of everything that's in excess, which it does. Then there's also the overflow, or the scroll, excuse me. The property is called overflow. The scroll will give you the ability, the user the ability to scroll throughout the rest of it. 
Um, should I keep it like that? Yeah, I guess I'll keep it like that. It's kind of ugly in my opinion, but... And then from this point, uh, you don't have to keep it, keep this scroll on, but I will. And then from this point, you can position it wherever you'd like on the web page. So let's go position, absolute, and... Whoops, semicolon. Then let's go top. And where should we move this guy? We could move it 50 pixels down. Now nah, let's just go from the left and move it over 50 pixels. So I click save and there you go. Now we can move it. And from there, you know, you could also float it if you wish. That's all about I really wanted to show you. It's just that you can use the float property. You don't even have to use these guys right here. I could just use float like this. And yes, you can use floats within floats just like this. So if you float it to the left, then if we added any other elements, we could add them right next to this. So really, if I just copied and pasted all this, so if I just made some other div tags here. And I gave it an ID of section 2. Let's see what happens here. So I'll throw in some P tags, right? And this is the second section and if I went in my default CSS and worked on section 2 uh, what I could do is from here it should appear on the right side which it does but you shouldn't do it that way you should actually make give it an ID or a class and tell it to float on the left you could do it on the left you could do it on the right let's, let's just see what happens on the left let's see what happens I actually want you to see what will happen as you can see, it stayed there, and then this guy positioned back normally. But um, let's say I wanted to position it on the right. Then, once it's float on the right, we could give it a margin on the right, on the right side, excuse me, and give it a border of 50 pixels from that side. So now there's 50 pixels right there, and we floated it from the right. So you could do that. Whoops! How'd that happen? There we go. And let's give it a width and a height. We could always give this thing a width of, I don't know, 200 pixels and a height of 100 pixels and give it a background color of gray as well. So let's see how this will look. And there you go. Now it has all the attributes that we gave it. And then we can move this wherever we would like. Move it from the top, from the right, wherever you'd like. So. Uh, this is kind of a prerequisite to not the next tutorial. The next tutorial should be on navigation bars, but the one after that will be sorting your website with division tags uh, a bit more advanced. And we'll be moving things around and making a really nice structured website. So I hope this tutorial was helpful for you, and I'll see you next time.